okay so 2020 2020 might just be the worst year ever <laughs> Okay, the worst year in recent times, let me correct myself. Okay, so with this pandemic putting a total lockdown on the whole world, we have a lot of economists and politicians, business experts and financial gurus all predicting that we might be heading for another global recession. So for those of you guys who have actually read these articles, you watch the news and keeping up with current affairs, you already know all of this, right? So maybe the reason why you clicked on this video is because you lack discipline when it comes out to saving up for a rainy day. We all know we need to have at least six months worth of living expenses saved up in an emergency fund just in case something happens and probably right now your emergency fund is null or maybe you're not worried about this whole recession thing and you just you're just saving up towards a certain goal and you just want to get there faster if you want to know how you can budget better and save more money faster then keep watching this video Budgeting is a really great way to track your expenses and it actually helps to keep you disciplined when you are saving. Now, um, there's a general rule of thumb that persons usually go by when they are budgeting and that's the 50, 30, 20 budgeting rule. So the first thing that you want to do is to compute your after-tax income. So that's how much money you have remaining after tax is subtracted from your income. So let me just assign some imaginary figures to this so you can have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Let's say you're receiving $6,000 per month, right? And let's say the tax rate is 10%. So the government requires 10% of what you're getting per month. So 10% of $6,000 is $600. So each month you have to take $600 out of your $6,000 to give to the government. And what you have remaining is 5,400 US dollars. So when you have that figure down now, you're gonna allocate 50% of that figure to cover your needs for the month, 30% to cover your wants, and the remaining 20% will go towards your savings. Okay guys, so for further clarification, let's just define each category that we had on our pie chart. So the first thing that I mentioned was our needs. So needs, these are fixed expenses, they are non-negotiable because they are vital for our survival. So example of needs would be like um, utilities, so the electricity bill, the water bill, and also another example of needs would be prescription drugs. Um, food for the month and shelter so that would be like your mortgage or your rent and also transportation is a need so you'd factor in um, maybe gas for the month or bus fare for the month if you take the bus and even parking fees so those would be considered our needs another category that was mentioned was our wants now these are less essential so our survival, they're more geared towards our pleasure for our entertainment. So examples of this would be like um, your monthly Netflix subscription, shopping, dining out, partying, vacation, or just going out for drinks. And the last category that was discussed was savings. Now that is the original term that they used to refer to the 20%, right? But I don't call it savings, I just call it finances because it has since then evolved over time. People are getting smarter and smarter, right? Everybody wants to be financially secure and saving won't guarantee us, saving alone will not guarantee us financial stability. So more and more each day, you find that more people, including myself, 
we aren't only using that 20% to save, but we're also using that 20% to invest, you know, to buy assets. And some people are also using some of that 20% to pay off debt. So the 20% of the 50 30 20 budgeting rule is all geared towards your financial well being guys you can bend this rule if you want to it's your money if your financial well-being is more important to you which it should be or maybe you're just trying to save towards your goal faster then don't be afraid to allocate a greater percentage of your income towards your savings towards your investments have you ever heard of the term egg money this term actually originated from back in the day when the farmer's wives used to sell chicken eggs on the side. And the money that they'd make from selling chicken eggs, they'd put that money aside to purchase fun stuff, you know, for their entertainment and for their pleasure. Today, we still use that term to describe any cash that we might have accumulated over time from a little side hustle or even to describe the loose change that we have piling up in our coin jar. Needless to say, if you don't have a coin jar, you should actually get some and start saving up your coins. It's actually a very easy habit to form and you'd be surprised to know just how much money you will cash out at the end of the year saving your coins here are a couple side hustles that i figured would be great during this time so the first one being forex trading it's the only recession proof thing to get into so forex will forever be a booming market just try to avoid the pyramid scheme type of forex scams the second one is peer-to-peer -peer lending. The pandemic has affected most businesses, so a lot of people might be unable to pick up that extra shift at work that they usually depend on for extra cash because of some countries having curfew times. The third one is being a digital creator. With most people having a lot of time on their hands because of quarantine and curfew hours, a lot of people are using their time to try and boss up. So if you're good at design, making logos, building websites, making ads, editing, photography, running social media pages, then you are needed. The other two that I have on my list are babysitting and tutoring. Some countries still require school doors to be closed, especially here in Jamaica. However, a lot of people have returned to work and their kids need to be supervised. This is a great side hustle, especially for full-time college students and for those who are stuck at home all the time. The last side hustle that I have here is buying and reselling stuff. So you can find really good suppliers off AliExpress and sell stuff via Instagram if you're starting out small with just a little bit of money. Guys, there's this thing I do to help me keep disciplined when it comes on to spending my money. Like, anytime when I catch myself wasting money, like I buy something that was a total waste of money, I always like pay myself back along with a 5% interest and I put that money in my savings. And I don't care if the money that I spent was ratchet money, like, my regular spending money for my wants like from a something stupid like if my regret it i'ma say no i never have to buy this i'ma just pay about myself i'ma make sure i give myself a five percent interest and i put it back into my savings nothing i'ma want money and i'm not back into my ratchet money i don't i don't deserve it anymore i just put it into the savings yeah so to avoid wasting money you guys can always apply the seven day rule so let me tell you how it works Basically, if you see something that you you are wanting to buy, if you, you, you want to buy it but you feel like say, it's unnecessary, you feel like it's a total waste of money, you're not sure if you really want to buy it, give yourself seven days. Give yourself seven days before you actually make the purchase. Usually, after that seven day period, the urge of wanting to make this purchase, it will eventually go away and you don't bother want to buy it again. However, if you were shopping online and you had that item in your cart over that seven day period, usually the retailer would have probably sent you a discount by now. But this only worked for some retailers. 
another helpful tip that i have for you is gonna be especially helpful to you when you are buying groceries and that's buying in bulk if you know that you are consuming a certain product a lot then it's gonna be very expensive in the long run if you just buy them single single no no you see me me love cereal Crusted flakes to be exact. But the thing is, whenever I go to the supermarket, I just pick up one box of cereal. And that's the small box. And it only holds about 284 grams. And that's for $580, I think. Yeah, $580. That's inclusive of tax. But the thing is, the thing is, I find myself, I keep on going back to the supermarket by the end of the week to buy a next box of cereal. And for you know it again, I'm going to go back again the other week and I buy a next box. So, when I check up all of that now, you realize that as, um, in total I spent $1,740 for three boxes of cereal, right? And then one day me in a supermarket and I'm in the aisle and I'm thinking to myself and I'm like but me big and fool why me not just buy the big box the big bag of cereal for one thousand two hundred and eighty three dollar instead if I buy the local three three box of cereal then for so much money because at the end of the day this is cheaper this is cheaper and you get way more cereal than what you would have get if you buy the three box of cereal Combine. They get Another tip that I have for you guys is comparative shopping. From me here the word comparative, you know that there's some comparing going on between prices. That's basically what you do. All you do is you compare prices. So if you see something that you'd like to purchase, try and see if you can get it cheaper someplace else before you decide to purchase it. You'll be surprised to know the price differences when you actually walk around and compare prices at different locations. Here's something you ought to know. Let me give you some banking tips now. I think you should have at least three bank accounts. A savings account, a checking account, and an investment account. Now, in regards to savings, um, it's a good idea to apply the teachings of the richest man in Babylon and rich dad, poor dad. And that is to pay yourself first. A simple 10% of your income will do just fine um, if you are working a regular 9 to 5 job I think you should head over to HR and set up an automatic savings now this is quite simple all you have to do is to ask your employer to deduct 10% from your salary each month and to deposit that 10% into your savings account this way you have little or no interaction with your savings so that means you're less tempted to go and spend out the savings and you don't have to worry about being too lazy to go and deposit the 10% yourself. Another thing that I'd like to share with you is that your savings account should just be for saving money alone. You shouldn't be doing your day-to-day -day regular spending out of your savings account. That is what a checking account is for. So you need to organize yourself, right? If you find that your savings account is being used for those two purposes, both for the purpose of saving money and for making daily transactions, then you'll quickly come to realize that your savings will eventually be depleted. Reason being is that when you have your savings and you're spending money all together in one, then it becomes a little hard to actually decipher how much spending money you actually have. And then now when your spending money is finished, you don't realize it, but you actually start to swipe over into your savings without actually realizing that you're swiping over into your savings and don't even think about trying to put the money that you are trying to save in a checking account it just doesn't make any sense remember i said earlier a checking account is specifically designed for the purpose of daily transactions so money in a checking account is constantly being taken out of it right there's no growth so as far so you're not going to get any interest on that as far as the bank sees money in that account is for your spending 
not for growing or saving or to pile up or nothing. So no interest on that. So it just defeats the whole purpose. Even though if I'm going to be very honest with myself, the interest that the bank gives to people nowadays on their savings, like, that cannot even compete with inflation. Like, oh my god. But since we're on the topic of growth now, that brings me to my third point. Opening an investment account. Time to brag. If you've been living under a rock, then I'd like to be the first to tell you that Jamaica has the best performing stock market in the world. And it's been like that for the past four years. So if you were to invest in the Jamaican stock market during those four years, let me tell you, you would have made a lot of money. More money than what you would have ever made if you were to invest in other stock markets outside of Jamaica. However, before you start to get all excited, make sure that you go around and you visit different banks and brokerage firms, right? Schedule an appointment to speak with one of their investment advisors and get as much information as you can. And if you're very new to this stock trading thing, don't be afraid to ask them stupid questions, okay? Also, you can check out Kalila Henrique's YouTube page. She has a lot of videos regarding buying and selling stocks in the, ja in the Jamaican stock market. I'll, I usually watch her videos, right? And I'm telling you that her videos are very, very beginner friendly. Like, just head on over to her page right now and just subscribe and start learning. They're very helpful and I am still learning so much from her. Also, the Jamaica Stock Exchange usually holds various conferences throughout the year that are sometimes open to the public free of cost. Um, I went there last year and it was very informative. I'm telling you, I learned a lot. And you'll also receive a lot of free handouts with very important information that you can use when you are trading stocks. Information that can give you some clarity on a lot of things regarding the stock market. So another banking tip that I have for you, it may seem like no big deal, but trust me, try to use the ATM of your bank. So if you have an NCB Midas card, try and find an NCB ATM. If you have a Scotiabank debit card, try and find a Scotiabank ATM. The you know, reason being is that, you know, when you withdraw money from other ATMs that are not from your bank, a fee is gonna be charged. And even though it's a small fee, it does add up over time. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys found these tips to be really, really helpful. And also, if you have any other tips, um, in regards to saving and budgeting and investing you can leave those tips in the comment section below Do not forget to like share this video and subscribe. Bye